data analysis. You store that data, you use the NGS softwares, you upload it there, and then you get the data analysis of those as well. Right? So this is the broad three uh, optimization process that people go for. In the same way, if you are doing an NGS, you can optimize the second process. Right. So the first process is your library creation. The second process is sequencing. So you can always optimize the sequencing process. And then finally, you go for data analysis. Now, NGS process mainly finds two major applications. One is your chip sequencing and one other one is your RNA sequencing. Now, what happens in a chip sequencing is that the term, the terminology chip basically comes from chromatin immunoprecipitation. Now, CH from chromatin and uh, IP from Im immunoprecipitation. Now, what happens here is basically you are conjugating two process together. You are doing chromato immunoprecipitation as well as you are doing DNA sequencing and you are repeating these two process simultaneously. You are doing these two process simultaneously, right? So on the one hand, you are doing your chip uh, analysis. You are doing your chromatin immunoprecipitation. And also, as soon as you get the desired result, you are going for your DNA analysis as well, using your whatever DNA sequencing process that you want to go for. So the very first step is you get your genomic DNA, you cross-link the protein. Now, what happens here is in chip sequencing, the major idea behind the chip sequencing process is that you the necessary need to go for a chip sequencing is to see how proteins are able to interact with the DNA molecule. Let's say you want to find how a specific protein is interacting at what specific site of your DNA molecule, then you go for your chip sequencing analysis. So you cross link your protein to your DNA molecule over here. So first you defragment it. So you have defragmented your bases over here. The main idea here is that the amount of bases that you're defragmenting, it shouldn't be much larger. It should be not more than 500 base pair long, because if it goes more than 500 base pair, then what happens is the complexity of your process increases out. And there's a chance that you won't get the desired result. That's why people try to keep the base pair very short, around 300 to 400, that's it. Or somewhere from 200 to 400, you can say, not beyond 500, right? So once you have uh, like defragmented your genomic DNA, you cross-link the protein to your DNA molecule, once your cross-linking of your protein to DNA molecule is done, you get your cell lysate over here. Now you go for centrifugation process. As soon as you go for a centrifugation process, you will get your superintin and then you will get your precipitate. Now in your precipitate molecule, in your precipitate that you've obtained, you will get your proteins which are interacting with your DNA sequences, right? So you throw off your superintin, you collect your precipitate, and once your collect collection of your precipitate is done, you then unlink the protein and then you purify the DNA. So the basic procedure was first you got your genomic DNA, you fragmented the genomic DNA into short bases, short base pair long, and then you cross link the protein to DNA. The reason we are cross linking is because we are basically want because we basically want to find how a protein is interacting with our DNA molecule. That that is our major aim, right? So you cross link the protein to DNA molecule. Once this cross linking it does is done, then you shear or you tear down your DNA molecule by sonicating. So you go for sonication process, you, have, uh, you get what is called as a cell lysate. In the cell lysate, you add bead and then you add antibodies. Now, why do you add antibody is this process, the process whereby you are basically adding or attaching your antibody is a process called as chip or the chromatin immunoprecipitation. So this process is known as your chromatin immunoprecipitation. So here, that's why the name chip sequencing came from. Chip from here and then sequencing from your normal DNA sequencing, right? So what you do is, as soon as you get your cell lysate, you apply your antibody, which is attached to a bead. So these antibody will then find the corresponding sequence in your protein and it will find your target protein. The antibodies will get attached to the target protein and then you go for centrifugation. As soon as you go for centrifugation, you get your supernatant, you get your precipitate, you throw out your supernatant. In the precipitate, you have your DNA sequence attached with your protein and along with the antibody. Then what you do is that you then like bifurcate your protein and DNA molecule. So you unlink because here what we did was we first joined the protein and DNA. Here we are like unjoining both of them. We are like bifurcating protein. We are separating protein and DNA molecule. And once you purify your DNA, for purification process, you can go for HPLC or RPHPLC or other, there are different analytical process you can go for. And once you obtain your purified DNA molecule, then you go for your sequencing process or the next generation sequencing. And then you can get your final sequences that you want. So this was the one major application whereby you want to find how your protein is basically interacting with your DNA molecule, right? In the same way, there is another process 
whereby you can go for your RNA sequencing as well, right? Now the reason RNA sequencing has found its major interest is in the oncology field in terms of cancerous field, right? So majorly what people do is that the major idea here is the same, is just that you're adding one more step. That is, you're first isolating your RNA. Now keep this thing in mind that you can't do sequencing with your RNA. You can do your sequencing with your RNA, but that process is not very much reliable as compared to your DNA sequencing, right? So you obviously have to come convert your RNA into a DNA sequence. And we know how to do that, right? We convert RNA into your cDNA libraries. And then after your cDNA is created, you go with the same process again and again. So what here happens is that let's say you have a sample of interest, right? You have your tumor sample with you. And let's say you have a control as well, which is a normal uh, cell, which is not non-tumorous, right? You isolate your RNA from here. Now, once your RNA is isolated, we know that transcription process happens. And after transcription, there is also a process called as post-transcriptional analysis or post-transcriptional modification, right? And in that post-transcriptional modification, there are various processes that happens. There is a polyadenylation tail, whereby on your tail end, you add multiple adenine and uh, nucleotides and you have your five prime capping as well right so you go for your post transcriptional modification you add your polyadenylation tail you add multiple adenine groups over here as soon as your multiple adenine groups are added now you have your rna ready with you and then using that rna you convert it into a cdna so you convert it into a cdna library you generate your cdna library and then once your cdna library is generated then the same process is repeated again and again you go for your sequence and you have various kind of repeats. You have your cDNA fragments with you. Then you go for your complementary sequence DNA. You again attach an adapter to it. Once your adapter is attached, you go for a radio labeled nucleotide. Your nucleotides will be added. You then have to like, uh, you know, finally you have to cleave those things. And as soon as your new nucleotides are added, your radio labeled thing will fluoresce. And as soon as the fluorescence is shown, you will detect that. And then according to that, you will finally generate your final sequences that you have, right? And this is majorly involved in the process of uh, RNA sequencing, is majorly involved in the process of oncology. Like oncology is a basic field whereby you will find people doing RNA sequencing. You can obviously go for various other kind of fields as well, whereby you can apply RNA sequencing. But majorly people are using this in the field of cancerous or oncology, so to say, right? So these were the major two broad spectrum whereby NGS has right now found its uh, major use. Like the people are also using different kind of uh, applications as well. But majorly, if you go and find people who are doing NGS, they are mainly doing it for these two types of process only. Other people are doing it, but still we are waiting uh, for that specific boom to happen in the terms of NGS, right? And we are seeing that right now. So that was with the how the basic NGS happens and how you can you know always go for your ngs things and if you want you can go on our website which we and we offer various different kind of uh, processes there as well you can go for our, on our website livegen bio you will find different uh, courses there as well which are really relevant in terms of your bioinformatics handling uh, you know you know giving you a hands on experience in terms of whether you are going for industry or you are building your own industry or you know you are going for a major you know breakthrough so that's why uh, you can go for our website you can search there and uh, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, we will be back after uh, five minutes of break and then we will be uh, seeing how you can actually process your data using your NGS software. Okay. So thank you very much. You guys can take a five minute breaks and we'll be back again.
hello everyone so i think we should now start off with uh, our live example using different ngs softwares right so there are various kind of ngs softwares which are available that you can utilize to do your uh, analysis uh, like your sequence analysis and for example galaxy is there there are different instances of uh, servers which are provided you can go and search for that today what we are looking at is one of the servers which is known as galaxy now the reason that we are basically looking at galaxy is that galaxy provides you with a really large amount of attributes that you can uh, you know use out for your own data analysis and you can you know do multiple kind of attributes with that which actually helps you out with a good amount of analysis for your sequencing data right so the very first thing is once you are done with your sequencing the very first thing is you have to store your data right and the recommended way to do that is to store it in a cloud server basically uh, you can do it on a laptop as well if you have that file because usually what happens is the file is really large it is somewhere around 10 gb 11 gb 15 gb which totally depends upon uh, how you are basically using the sample and how you basically how you are using your dna sequences and how you store that right so the very first thing is let's say uh, if you are not having any kind of uh, your dna sequence right now right let's say you are not having anything that you have ran and just running a very brief example right so i'll just show you with a with a very brief example of how uh, i am running a basically flow so what you can do is just on your uh, website type ncbi so on ncbi people also upload various kind of databases which you can actually download those sequences and then you go for your uh, next generation sequencing analysis right so what you can do is you can just go for your ncbi on the website search for ncbi on the home page just go on the home page of ncbi and then on the left hand side there is an option of all resources so click on all resources so you will get something like this so it will show you all the resources which are available uh, in the ncbi different kind of databases which are available in the ncbi where people submit the database so you have your bio sample bio systems bookshelves all these values right what i want you to do is scroll down and once you scroll down you will get something called as genome right so you click on genome what this basically does is you can see the description of that as well so let's say you go back so in genome you can see what description it says so genome contains sequence and map data from whole genomes of over 1000 organisms so basically what happens is people who are basically going for whole genome analysis or sequence analysis and if they found a new result or a novel result what they do is that they upload their data on this genome database right so and you are really free to use and download those data obviously you have to you know give them credit for all those things uh, before you are going to use their, their data just you know have those because those data are licensed data so you have to have take permission from those then but obviously for your own personal use you can do that just to have a basic hands on experience right so you just click on genome and it will open up a whole this things right and you can search over here otherwise you can go from here as well you have external resources you have this other resources you have custom resources let's say you want to find for you know human genome you want to find it for microbes organelles viruses prokaryotic reference genomes all these things otherwise you can just like download or you know search for a specific file format that you want and the specific file format that we are going to look at is a rice uh, for the rice one okay so rice is basically uh, as you all know is an edible substance and we are basically going to see how in stressed condition and in a normal condition how this rice gene is basically behaving right so we will be first looking at how the chromosome behavior changes on a locus right and then how uh, different stressed conditions or normal condition would change out the way uh this um, you know mutations might happen in those sequences right so uh, there uh, so what you need to do is let's say if you are working in the field of uh, next generation uh, in a genome sequencing and let's say you are working in the field of plant biotechnology right and so what happens is you have a connection whereby different people are out there who are working in this field and who submit the data right so you can directly either search the author's name over here if you know that otherwise you can just directly search the name of the plant if you know for which plant you are basically looking for here i know the name of the file that i want right so because i been uh, following that person so i know the file that i want so the type of file in which the annotation is made like uh, in the genome analysis you write err and then followed by a six digit uh, code for that specific file so let's say here my file is 
right? So I'll just press enter. And if there is a file corresponding to this name, it will give me a final output. So you see, I get, the, get, get this specific output over here. It says Illumina HiSec 2000 sequencing. So wh whoever has done the sequencing, they has done it in Illumina HiSec 2000 sequencing. And this is the response to salt stress, right? In Oriza sativa, that is rice. So they are basically looking at how the rice is, have, is responding to the salt stress. When you're basically applying a nutrient to the uh, growth for the growth of those uh, sample, how the salt concentration changes and based on the change in the concentration, how your stress is basically getting out for uh, the corresponding rice plant, you're noting that, right? And then this is the RNA sequence data set. You, uh, this is written here, RNA sequence data set, right? So what you can do is you can just scroll down. You can see uh, the name of the server that they had used. So they have used the Illumina HiSec 2000 run uh, in 20.6 20, 20. Uh, megabytes of spots. And this is the file size. So 1.16 gig, uh, gigabytes of bases are there. And it's an MB download. So this is basically 601.7 MB download. So if you download the sample file, this is the amount of data that the file has stored. Right. So it will take a large amount of time for you, but depending upon your internet connectivity, you can download the file uh, fast or slow, right? And then this is the design. Basically, what is the design? Design basically here means the aim of the project that they were looking for. So basically, they have uh, found the response to soil stress treatment in Oriza Sativa. Then it is submitted by EMBL, that is the European Bioinformatic Institute, and they studied the response in the soil stress. And these are all the different files that have, they have created, right? So these are the two major files, but there are all other different files as well that you can look for. You can go for all experiments, all runs, and then you can just look and finally download those things. You can see here, they have the sample name as well. You have the library over here. They have defined all these things, the basic abstract of the paper they have downloaded here. And then here you can see the runs, how many runs are there, right? So this is the final major file that you are going to download, right? Or in this case, I'm just showing you. So I want to download this, so I'll just click on this and it will take me to another browser. So this says, so this shows me all the list of this run. So this says this run has one red per spot. So basically the, the, when they ran this particular sample, they did it in public and then they last updated it. So public means when they first uploaded the sample on NCBI. So they did it on 2015 and the sample file was last updated in 2018. And then again, this is the same thing over there. You can get all those things, right? This is a project and this is the SRA study, right? So now that you have attained this, there are two ways what you can do. Either you can download it from here, or another thing is you can directly import the data into your Galaxy server, right? So well, the next thing you can do is just go to your uh, Google and uh, type Galaxy NGS. It will show you the very first uh, link, use galaxy.org. Just click on that. It will take you to the home screen of your Galaxy server, right? Now, before using Galaxy server, what you need to do is that you have to have your account over here because what happens is if you don't have an account, Galaxy don't provide you with the uh, like possible uh, data sets or the possible uh, space whereby you can store your data, right? So if you are actually a user, you can just log in over here and then Galaxy gives you a certain amount of space whereby you can store your data, right? So you go over there, you store the data, and then you create your first user file. So that is the very first thing that you need to do. Go to Galaxy and then create your user file, right? Now, once you create a user file, this is something that will show up here. So this is your history. History basically says whatever programming that I have run up until now, and this is the total amount of file that I have always, like uploaded up until now when I started using Galaxy. So it was around total 13.55 GB of database I have used, and it shows how much of you are using basically. So you are using 7% of all the memory that is allotted to you, right? So you can see all the files are here. Now what you can do is you can just go over here in the search tool and you get all the different kind of data over here. And you get the get data, collection operations, text manipulations. So these are all the different attributes which Galaxy provides you in order to trim down your data or to you know process your data more effectively, right? Now the major thing that you have to keep here in mind is what we call as a fast queue format. What this fast queue format basically is, for example, let's say when you go to NCBI, you have a certain set of file format, like uh, you have your uh, FASTA format for your protein samples, right? And your, your data sequences, you have a FASTA for format for that. In the same way, when you're using a Galaxy server, you have your FASTA or fast queue format. 
Now this fast queue format is basically a text file whereby all of your data sets are basically converted into a text file and corresponding to that text file you get, you are getting a score for that your, for your dna sequences so let's say you are you have downloaded your data set you have downloaded your dna sequence once you convert your dna sequence or the data that you have into a fast queue format what fast queue basically does is it stores two things first it will store your dna sequence and corresponding to that dna sequence it will store a specific value or the point we can see for that specific sequence that you are running right so the very first thing is either you can go from ncbi and uh, download the data sets if you don't want that because what happens is it takes a large amount of time because you can see the size is 714 mb so it will take some time for you to download the whole data set so it's obviously not advisable to go for that what you can do is in the we just type sra right just type sra what sra basically does is that if you just search it right so now what you can do is i'll just let you know what sra basically does so what happens here is that the sra file that you are basically asking for is nothing but the sequence analysis for this particular sample file that we are going to look at that is what is in the short form is written as sra right so now as soon as you search for sra you get these different options over here Right, EBI SRA, SRA, EN SRA, download and generate file up format. This one. Now we are going to go for the fast queue format because that is the default format with the uh, which uh, Galaxy server basically understands for. Right. So what you can do is you we are we are going to download and extract the reads. What this extract read basically means is that you are going to download the file directly to your Galaxy server, and then the Galaxy server will give you the output whatever data has been stored in that file. so you don't have to open the file you just have to export import the file into your galaxy server click on that file and whatever data that file has you will get all the data over here right so you'll just click here once you click it you get something like this right now you have to add the accession number right so for example i was looking for this one err266228 this is my accession number now you can select the output in which you want right so there are these three types of output either you have a zip folder or you have an unzip one or you have your bzip one now what happens with the zip thing is that if you import your zip file you have to extract it and then extraction takes a large amount of process because your file is already very like like it is huge in size right so then extraction takes a large amount of time so it's always better to go for an unzipped fast queue format so just click on unzip and then execute it once you execute it it will show you like this the executed and you can see here my file is here right and it starts loading now this file is really like, uh, like the the size of this file is really large right it is somewhere around 714 so it will take some time to process all this file right so what i have done is i have already processed this file beforehand because then it will take a large amount of time around it will take around 10 minutes or 15 minutes depending upon your internet connectivity how much you long so what you can do is you can just delete this one here right so i'll just delete it now what you can see here that this is shown in our history so history basically shows what you are basically working with right or, or for which sequences you have already worked with now here it says 79 shown 31 deleted 24 hidden what this basically means is up until now whatever i have worked with on those files 79 are shown currently here so 79 files have been shown over here then 31 of them are deleted so i have deleted 31 of them which were not relevant to me and 24 of them are hidden so basically what we do is that why we hide the file is that sometimes what happens in this open type of server is that your data might not be that much safe right and that is the case with every kind of servers so what you do is that you hide the data right and then you can obviously access by clicking here you can obviously access whatever your hidden data are right so i have already uh, downloaded that file so i'll just show you so these are the files you can see these are the files that become green right so th these are the files that have been already loaded up and some and the files which are still loading you can see it is still buffering out so it is taking some time i have also ran some of my files so it is already running now and it will take amount of time because you have run a large amount of time and then these are in queue so those files uh, in front of whose a clock symbol is made that is those files are in queue right now right and these are running so basically this is your data analysis which is being running now for the file that i have been using up until now right so those are basically running here so now that you have downloaded this file what you can do is that you can always look out how to use that file so what you can do is i'll just show it here over here so just scroll down so i'll show you where i was so this was my file uh, 
just to say it takes some amount, some amount of time to visualize the data over here. Right. So you see, this was my file that I downloaded ERR 266288 in a fast queue format. And what you can do is that just click over here. If the click function is not functioning, what you can do is there's a I symbol over here, which is called as view data. Just click on it and you will see your data over here. You see, this is very encrypted manner. You can see something is written over here, right? What this basically is, this is a fast queue format. So whenever you write a file in a fast queue format, there is a specific type of structure in which the fast queue format writes your file, right? So the very first rule is that your fast queue format will always start with an at the rate symbol and followed by your sequence ID. What this sequence ID is, it is nothing different to that of an annotation. For example, in NCBI, we annotate something. We have an accession ID number. In the same way, when you're going for an uh, NGS analysis, you have your sequence ID number. And this is your whole sequence ID number for the sequence that I'm downloaded over here. And then this might sometime be followed by your description. Now descriptions are optional. If you want, you can add the description, but I haven't added any description. If there was a description, it would have been continued over here, right? Then the second line is your actual sequence. The sequence with which we are going to work for. So this is your actual sequence. The third line is nothing, just the replicate of this sequence followed by a plus sign. That is it. The third line is just the same thing, whatever it is written over here with a plus sign. And fourth line is remember I told you in fast queue format, what fast queue format does is that it stores two things. First is your sequence with which you are going to work. And corresponding to that sequence, your key value or the scoring value. So these are the scoring values, right? Now they don't look like a numeric value because they have been converted into an ASCII format. That is ASCII format. They have been converted into an ASCII format. And in an ASCII format, these values have a specific sort of values associated with them, right? You don't get a numeric value. Your numeric values are converted into an ASCII format once you convert your file into a fast queue format. Right. So this is how you uh, like write your uh, the value scoring values. Basically, the only thing to note here is that this the line this uh, the sequence of this scoring value should coincide with the uh, length of your sequence. It need not coincide with like if it doesn't need to be like if it is T here, so T should be here as well. No, it doesn't happen like that. The only thing is whatever length of your sequence is that should be the length of your scoring value as well. It should not vary with that. That is the only thing, right? So this is your, these four lines basically construct your one sequence and the same way goes in for another sequence. So you can see there are a whole lot of sequences which are there and you can just scroll down over here and you can see oh, there are different kinds of data sets available over here, right? So we have run the sequences, you have different sequences over there and then you have this, right? Now, once you have this file over here, the next step to do is that you see there's an option called this upload over here, uh, sorry, download over here, right? From URL. So what you're going to do is that you're going to click on it. And then what you can do is you can either download the file from the web or you can upload it from the disk. Now what basically we are going to do is that this file that we have downloaded over here, it was a fast queue format, right? But we don't want a fast queue format because what happens is in a Galaxy server, there are only two main sorts of file that Galaxy works with. One is your fast queue format, which basically stores the data that you have. Another file that you have is called as the GK3 file, which I'll show you here. GFF3 file here, right? So this is the file that basically consists all of your all data, which is the rice. Basically, we are going to work with rice. So you have your rice plants over here and all the data has been stored over here, right? So we have to work with these two files, right? So I'll show you how to download this file as well. So to download this file, what you need to do is go over here, click over here, and then you have uh, something in the bottom uh, center. There's an option called as paste slash fetch data. So you can click over here and it will allow you to enter. Either you can directly upload your files from your computer. If you have on your local computer workstation, you can upload the files from there. Or if you know the link where the file has been created, you can just copy and paste the link over here as well, right? So what you can do is I'll show you uh, the link for that file as well. So this, this is the Galaxy. Uh, so this is my uh, website where all the data has been stored, right? So this is basically the rice plant biology msu.edu. So msu is basically the university whereby the work was going on. So you can see, let me just delete all this thing. Right. So this is basically your, uh, this one, uh, the file that has been created uh, over here. So what they do is that 
they have a own directory whereby they upload all of their data sets right so you can directly get the data from there so you just click on data you have your these different type of things associated with you eukaryotic projects tiger plant repeat rice gene association so we are going basically for the eukaryotic projects in your eukaryotic project you have this sativa right or rice sativa that is for rice you click on it in this you have your annotation values you have you click on it on that you have your pseudo molecules basically these are the tools tools are basically uh, the data sets that uh, you you what tools you utilized to do the ngs and then you have your pseudo molecules this is the file which basically consist your whole data that you have that you are storing basically so we we'll click on pseudo molecules and then you see there are different versions